American oyster catcher is a large stately shorebird that lives along the coast in the Americas. The estimated population size is about 43,000 and about 11,000 in the United States. It's a United States Fish and Wildlife species of concern for several reasons. First of all, they can only live in the coastal zone. Second of all, they have a low overall population size and they have low breeding success. And finally, they have delayed breeding, meaning that the, they don't breed until they're at least three years of age. The oyster catcher population is threatened by a broad range of factors, which include overwash, predation, and pollution. Overwash is an issue because oyster catchers nest on very low islands. Thus, storms or unusually high tides can overwhelm their nests. Potential solutions include the creation of low mounds of treated shell to extend the height of islands. While most oyster catchers nest on islands to minimize the risk from predators, chicks and eggs are still susceptible to gulls, grackles, possums, feral cats, coyotes, rattlesnakes, and more. This year, partners and volunteers are treating many nesting islands to combat fire ants, which are yet another threat Trash and plastic pollution are significant threats to the oyster catcher. For example, a number of birds have become entangled in carelessly discarded fishing line, which inhibits their ability to feed, leading to obvious and unfortunate results. To combat this, volunteers and partners have been conducting extensive off-season cleanups of nesting islands. GCBO started a project in 2011 monitoring oyster catchers on the Texas coast that included nest monitoring and color banding of adults and chicks. We're color banding the birds so that we can tell the individuals apart and that allows us to determine how long birds will stay paired and how long they will remain on their territory, um, wh which chicks will come back to breed when they're old enough, and, uh, and how long they live. Monitoring begins in February at the start of nesting season and continues through July. Nesting areas have typically been monitored by boat, though kayaks are now proving very useful. The birds pair off, nesting begins and the first eggs soon appear. The battle for survival begins. To help identify and track the oyster catcher population, GCBO bans as many adults and chicks as possible. Adults must be trapped, while chicks are carefully captured by hand, ideally just before they are judged ready to fly. Captured birds are carefully banded, weighed and measured, and then released as soon as possible. In 2015, GCBO in Ottawa, Texas began a um, citizen science project monitoring oyster catcher nests in West Galveston Bay. We had over 30 volunteers help us with that project and it was so successful that we are now trying to extend it further down the coast. Volunteers will uh, monitor nests with kayaks or using their own power boats. They monitor the nests once a week from February through July and that allows us to keep track of the productivity of the birds and uh, determine what factors may be influencing their breeding success. So I'd like to invite all of you to come join us on our adventure. Get off the couch, stop thinking about it, get in your kayaks and help make a difference to our nesting islands and in particular to our American oyster catchers.
what's not to like? You're outside, it's a beautiful day, you're exercising, and you're helping to save the American oyster catcher. Come on out and join us. It's great, you'll have fun. If you'd like to monitor an oyster catcher pair or, or a couple of oyster catcher pairs along the Texas coast, please contact me and uh, I will hook you up with the training program that we have and you can get started monitoring as soon as possible.